some thoughts on death and funerals, etc. Um, I know it's a bit of a morbid subject. Many people don't want to think about it, let alone talk about it. I look at many scriptures and also share a little from life experience around the world. Uh, I believe it's important to discuss these issues well before while we are healthy and of sound mind. And we also should discuss a living will. What happens if our loved one ends up being on life support systems in the intensive care or critical care unit in the hospital, intub intubated, etc., unable to breathe by themselves? We need to discuss all that with our closest uh, loved ones. Then there's primarily three ways of disposing a dead body. The most popular or common is burial with various religions. For Christians, for sure, that's the most popular. Burial. Some people insist they must only be buried, and then their head needs to point to the east because the scripture says as lightning comes from the east to the west. Really, I think that's a bit much, but uh, what happens if someone dies at sea? They don't get to have a burial. What happens if there's an air accident? They don't get to have a burial. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So the moment my spirit leaves my body, Andrew is with Jesus. And if you're a child of God, you will be with Jesus too. So I'll tell you what I think about this body when my spirit is left. So there are those who insist on burial. God bless you. You're welcome to do that. There are those who prefer to be cremated. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. If you knew Jesus, you've got to be with him. This is just the carcass. However, I think it's a bit eerie when I walk into a friend's house and they say, this urn with the ashes, this is Aunt Jemima. And this is my pet dog, Lulu. It's like, oh, really? That, that's a bit, but some people, it, uh, it, it stokes them. So I'm happy for you. For me, it's kind of like, not for me, all right? So you've got burial, you've got cremation, uh, with the urn or without the urn, without the ashes. And then I belong to the third category, and that is to donate my entire organ system. There's a beautiful sticker, a very clever sticker there, I requested uh, residents in in various parts of the in the states, USA, and I know in Phoenix, where people put on their trash bins, don't take your organs with you. Heaven knows we need them here. So I believe firmly in organ donation. If someone needs a kidney and someone needs a cornea, whatever they need, let them harvest my body and take all the organs they want instead of saying, no, only my kidney, only my heart. Take any organ you need. Why not? But they've got to get the body right away after you're dead. Within 24 hours, I believe, they've got to harvest it. And in my case, it's not just organ donor, my entire body. The rest of the body, then, they can take to a medical college, medical hospital, where students, they need bodies, not live bodies, but uh, dead bodies to practice on. So let them do that. And then whatever's left, it's probably cremated and disposed of. So that's me. You think, oh, I couldn't do that. I want a burial. Fine. God bless you. Now, Job 14, 14, an amazing verse. Job says, if a man die, will he live again? All the days of my life, I will wait till my change come. Bible scholars think Job lived probably about 5,000 years ago, thereabouts. He says, all the days of my life, I will wait till my change come. Job saw death as simply a transition from this earthly life to life with his Redeemer. Because in another scripture in Job we read, he says, I know my Redeemer lives and on the earth again will stand. How could Job have that phenomenal prophetic insight and even use the term Redeemer? 5,000 years ago at least. That's about 3,000 years before Christ. Amazing. Psalm 23, verse 4. The psalmist says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Remember, death is called a dark veil or crossing the river Jordan. But the psalmist says, It's the valley of the shadow of death. You cannot have shadow without light. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And hear this also. The shadow of a dog cannot bite you. The shadow of a bear cannot crush you. The shadow of a giant cannot kill you. So also, blood-washed child of God, the shadow of death cannot destroy you. We simply 
go through this change, transition from this earthly body to eternity with Jesus. Hallelujah. John 3, 16 and John 3, 18 are powerful twin verses in Jesus' discourse with Nicodemus. John 3, 16 talks about eternal life. And watch out. John 3, 18 talks about eternal death. John 3.16, Jesus says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Two verses later, He says, He that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Dear listener, if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, repent of your sin, have them washed in the blood of Jesus, become a child of God right now. So that the moment you, you know, when you pass away, you go to be with Jesus for all of eternity. Then in John chapter 11, where the Lord Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, verses 21 through 26. Then Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now, whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha replies, I know he'll rise in the last day of the resurrection. John eleven twenty five. 25, the Lord Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And in the next verse, the Lord Jesus says to her, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? This question is not just asked of Martha. It's asked of every listener. Whether we profess to be a Christian or not, do you and I believe that if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we will never die, but live forever with him in eternity? Now, especially if you've gone through a bereavement, you've lost a loved one, and everyone loses a loved one somewhere along life's journey, and then another, and then another. Many of us have been through hard times, trying times. We've even wondered if God was out there. And if he existed, did he even care about me? Let me encourage you, my friend. One songwriter in his song titled, Does Jesus Care When My Heart Is Pained? His chorus goes like this. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. He says, I know my Savior cares. We've heard it said, life is uncertain, but death is sure. John Milton, who wrote in famous epics, says, Death lays his icy hand on kings. In other words, no human being escapes death unless we are alive at the time that the Lord Jesus comes to take his bride away. Everyone will die if we are not alive at the time of the rapture or the catching up of the bride of Christ. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die. After that, the judgment. No one is exempt. We do not know when it will be our turn. Would you please consider making a complete commitment of your life to Jesus, first as Savior, and then make Him Lord of your life, so you can inherit eternal life with Him when your time comes to leave this earth. So that then if someone asks you, do you believe, like Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe? You can say, yes, I believe Jesus is my Savior. He's the Son of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55 says, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? Death is swallowed up in victory. This is the triumphant cry for the person who's put their faith in Jesus Christ. Psalm 116 verse 15 is a powerful verse. It says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He's waiting to welcome us into his embrace, into his loving arms. In closing, Philippians 2, 9, 10, 11, we read that at the name of Jesus, every knee must will bow. Dear friend, if you've not bowed your knee to Christ yet, I implore you to do so now so your eternity is guaranteed with the Lord Jesus in heaven. That is the greatest security 
and insurance of all. God bless you.